Tanse adventurers. So you've undoubtedly heard me talk at least once, if not many, many times, about Chrysogon's Coterie, which is the first book that I wrote for uh, for this system and for the OSR movement in general. Because I'd like to think that what we create as part of the ba- Basic Fantasy RPG project, basicfantasy.org, is useful enough that with not too much work at all, it's uh, it's applicable. It's something you can adapt to uh, your own system of choice, whatever that happens to be. Uh, but today I wanted to talk about this uh, second book that I wrote, which you may or may not have heard of. And uh, rather than being a resource book, you know, it's, it's not an NPC guide like the first one. This is an actual module or an adventure, and it's called Beneath the Silver Spire. I'm not sure what possessed me to sit down and write, uh, <laughs> write an adventure. Uh, I had some leftover energy in me at the time that I wrote the first book, and this kind of just came tumbling out after. It's uh, it's an homage. It's uh, When I was a young player, one of the adventures that particularly impressed me was White Plume Mountain. And uh, that lived in my memory for many decades as, as a book, uh, as an adventure that I really enjoyed. And uh, some things don't age the same. Some things are best left in your memory. <laughs> and I, I really don't mean to insult anyone that, that thinks that that's an amazing uh, adventure. But you should, you should probably read or, or listen to any interviews done by Lauren Schick, who's the original uh, creator of that module for TSR back in the day, where he expressed some surprise and shock that uh, what he submitted to TSR as sort of an audition for a job there, they ended up basically just publishing wholesale with, with very little modification to it. Um, so just to prove his ability as a writer and editor, he submitted the module, which included all of, it was like a fun house, you know, a house of horror fun house, I suppose, uh, with all the best traps and tricks that he'd ever used as a dungeon master himself. And he combined them all into one book. And as a child, I would say that that really delighted me. But uh, as a, uh, as a middle-aged person going back and, and rereading it, it, uh, it seemed a little, I don't know. I didn't find it as fun. I found it, uh, more difficult. So, um, when I, uh, wanted to do my own homage to that, I suppose I did stick with the original concept, which was, you know, stolen weapons that, that the players have to go on a hunt to retrieve. Um, these weapons are particularly dangerous, though, and I don't necessarily recommend that uh, that the PCs actually try to uh, to use them. But uh, that's part of the fun, is that they have their own personalities, and if you do try to implement them as part of the adventure, they will create, uh, I don't know, additional levels of, of intrigue and interest. But uh, anyway, I thought I would just have a quick flip through this book, and maybe particularly the fact that it's now, uh, it's nearing... Um, as you can see from the cover, the fact that there is a cover for this book, that's the telltale sign that something has gone from being something that's available on our uh, website for just general download and enjoyment to something that is slated for print publication. So uh, look at this beautiful cover made by S. Ender Thiel. Yeah. He uh, read the entire module. He came up with seven different scenarios for a potential cover picture and then when I selected this one this is uh yeah this is this is the result you can see in the four corners there the four weapons that are the stolen ones that have to be retrieved by the players and uh yeah some settings from from scenes inside of the uh, the adventure but uh I guess what I'm doing is I'm uh, I'm drawing your attention to this but I'm also perhaps uh, asking people to uh to give it a chance and actually try to run it because this module has not been play tested. I've taken my best guess as far as uh, giving a rating, as far as how uh, how difficult it is, and but I uh, because of all the variables, the fact that decisions made by the player really will determine <laughs> um, how simple or how deadly this adventure is. Yeah, I, I don't really know how to. Uh, how to make an estimation for its uh, for its difficulty. In any case, 
I invite you, if you're a dungeon master, to have a look at this adventure, to download it, to try it out with your players, and to come to basicfantasy.org. If you go to the workshop shop section, you will see that there is, um, and I'll actually link to it in the, in the details below in the description, where you can provide your feedback for how it worked out with, uh, with you and your players running it. Because I'd really appreciate, I guess, uh, if not for the original version, which makes it out to print, but maybe to do some, uh, I don't know, some reassessment, some reanalysis, <laughs> some, some uh, estimation as to what level and uh, how many characters are necessary to be able to get through this dungeon. Um, cons- um, th- that Keeping in mind that it, because it's old school, it's really just never a good idea to try to attack and kill everything. Yeah, you have to be strategic. You have to uh, read the room. Anyway, so while I uh, make that request of you, I guess I'll just finish by just reading the the introductory page, just in case there are players that are watching this video, and uh, they really shouldn't read the whole book because it spoils the fun. There are things I've included in here that even if it's read cover to cover, there are plenty of opportunities where I've invited the game master to add stuff in which cannot be anticipated. <laughs> um by people that are trying to, to, to cheat. Anyway, but uh, we'll just uh, go with the introduction here. Silver Spire Mountain, the Spire, is a treacherously dangerous natural monument feared and respected by the regional inhabitants. Clad in perilous ice and snow, but seething with volcanic activity within, its sheer cliffs and lava pits deterred humanoid presence and activity even before it was rumored to be inhabited by infernals and undead. But for one man, beckoned by the plume of smoke pouring from the mountain's peak, its danger made it impossible to resist as a personal fortress. A millennia past, Lothian Ganthar used his divine might to explore the spire's labyrinth of caverns and tunnels. Knowing the paranoid intrusiveness of the residents of the nearby town of Mowbray, and seeking refuge from further interference by his former masters at the Temple of Devas, Lothain eventually transported his library, laboratory, and loyal attendants to its fearsome depths, and never emerged. Over the centuries, his name and deeds faded from living memory, until recently, that is, when the name Lothain Ganthar once again began to be spoken in awe. From nearby cities, four priceless artifacts have been stolen from their reclusive collectors, Crescent, a golden sickle, Blood Thistle, a crimson morning star, Soul Fang, a silver scimitar, and Tickler, an ebony scythe. The collectors have promised to reward courageous adventurers with anything they desire for their safe return, provided the wish is within their power to grant. In response, guards and mercenaries were dispatched to overturn the region. Hovels and towers alike were torn apart in a fruitless search. Thieves were bribed to turn on each other. Innocents were blamed and executed. But not a hint of the location of the stolen items was found until the collectors each received a curious note stamped with the personal seal of Lothane Ganthar. So, there's the setup. I will leave the uh, link to, uh, to download this in, in the description. And if you're a Dungeon Master and you'd like to give this a try and give us some feedback on uh, what you thought, um, What's your estimate as far as uh, what uh, what level, <laughs> how many adventures do you need to, to make a su- successful run at this? You know, and your mileage may vary. Maybe you have cautious players. Maybe you have strategic players. Maybe you have crazy, crazy players that will just throw themselves into danger headlong. Yeah, we could get numbers all over the place. But any sort of feedback, I'd really appreciate it. Kikichi Nanaskopi Thank you. I am grateful for you. Until next time.